Good evening, friends. It's a joy for me to welcome you all for this special Sunday evening worship. Today we are observing the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Today we have a guest speaker from the Church of South India Synod Office, Reverend Dr. Pirmala Praveen Prabhu Sudhir. He is the CSI EMS Liaison Officer since 2018 September. He is a good friend of Gurukul Lutheran Theological College and Research Institute and Dr. Pramula Praveen Prabhu Sudhir himself is a theological teacher and he was teaching in the Social Analysis Department at the Andhra Christian Theological College, Hyderabad. We are very much privileged to have him as our speaker this evening. God bless us all. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In God's hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are God's also. The sea is God's, for God made it, and the dry land which God's hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Let us sing the opening hymn for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we come to your presence as part of your creation. We realize the goodness of the creation in the whole universe. We admire that your words have become the real world for us to live with you. We are in awe that the creation holds the best of all goodness and for every living being. As we humble ourselves to worship you, help us through your Holy Spirit to experience the fullness of life and the God fusion communion with the nature. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us praise and thank God by singing the song, Let All Things Now Living a Song of Thanksgiving. Let all things now living a song of thanksgiving to God the Creator triumphantly raise who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, who still guides us on to the end of our days. His banners are o'er us, His light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished, as forward we travel from light into light. His law he enforces, the stars in their courses, and sun in its orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean proclaim him divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us raise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to god in the highest hosanna and praise let us have the responsive reading from psalm 104 verses 1 to 13. bless the lord o my soul O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Wrapped in light as with a garment, you stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers fire and flame your ministers you set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken you cover it with the deep as with a garment the waters stood above the mountains at your rebuke they flee at the sound of your thunder they take to flight they rose up to the mountains ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys, they flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal, the wild asses quench their thirst. By streams, the birds of the earth have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Lord, we in our theological journey center God, self and others but often fail to restore our relationship with the rest of the creation. We have learned to worship you 
without celebrating all life and the fullness of life. All the more, we do not experience our solidarity with nature in relationship with God. Time and again, we forget nature itself is part of our worshipping community. Forgive that in our worships, we do not relate ourselves to our proper place in the law world. To recall who we are, where we have come from, the things upon which we depend, and that for which we are responsible. Lord our Creator, repeatedly we fail to experience the goodness of your steadfast love, availed through the heavens and the earth, and the waters and the light. We do not remember you, liberate us through the divided Red Sea, feed us with manna in the wilderness, and inhabit us in the blessed nations. Lord our Redeemer, habitually we worry for our food, clothing, safety and security. We have forgotten to remember to see the birds of the sky and the flowers of the forest and strengthen our faith for our livelihood. We choose to practice feeble faith. We fail to venture for the safety of the world for the future generations. Lord our Counselor, Forgive us that we have forgotten to learn from the ants that we will be united together to save and share food not only for ourselves but also for every person in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. I formed you, you are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. For I am about to create new heavens and new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Amen. Sing. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, O depths of the earth, break forth into singing, O mountains, O forest, and every tree in it, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and will be glorified in Israel. For this Sunday service worship, the Old Testament passage has been taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses from 1 to 6. Exodus chapter 17 beginning from verse 1. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rafidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some, some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Here's, here's in the reading. Praise to be God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 9 to 16. About noonday the next day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up 
on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down, being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again a second time, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Pray then in this way, Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debts and do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one here ends the reading praise to be god amen let us affirm our faith we believe in god the almighty who hovered in love over the primeval chaos and uttered creation into existence out of a holy mess we believe in the one who breathed the breath of life into human and engendered the prime family and community into being. We believe in the magnificent signature of God's image in every human being, signed in infinite variety and soon in multicolored splendor, even when it is humanly difficult to experience in our damaged bodies. We believe in the self-revelatory signature of God in Jesus Christ who came to restore healing and wholeness into every fiber of our existence. We believe in Jesus Christ who came to show that salvation is healing and wholeness and who opened our eyes that we may see each other into God's image beyond the troubling stereotyping and systematic use of race ethnicity, class, sexuality, disability and other identity markers to divide and fragment us. We believe in Jesus who came to open our hearts to the God who so loved the world and who called discipleship from among us to the elevation of human suffering that we may see the whole world of ours as never before as a God-loved, god bred and God-reconciled world. We believe in the crucified God who embraces with his wounded arms those who die alone at this time. We believe in the resurrected Savior who invites us to touch his wounds if we lack belief during these times of paralyzing fear and numbing trauma. We believe in the Holy Spirit who fosters connected relationships across the divide while we sit with ourselves. We believe in the Holy Spirit who always pushes the church to reach out to the margins and enter into the exilic homes through the gifts of technology, nudging each of us to birth hope and resilience. We also believe that the digital divide is human created and greed sponsored and the frontline workers embody flesh and blood communication. We believe that beyond the ravages of time and this pandemic, we will be restored into wellness and wholeness with different understandings of what it is to be the church in the world. We believe that one day we will be fully restored into God's image and God's healed body. Then wholeness will be the theme of great orchestral music of the church and the cosmos. Until then, we will build bridges of healing and reconciliation with each other and God's creation.
Therefore, we will commit ourselves every day to healing and wholeness until that day. Amen. Greetings to the Gurkul community and every one of you who joined us in this virtual Sunday service. I bring greetings to you from CSI Synod Secretariat, from the Office of CSI Evangelical Mission in Solidarity Liaison. I am very much thankful to dear Anan, Rev. Dr. John Samuel, Principal, for the opportunity given to me. We are associated in theological education for the past two decades and we are good family friends. I extend thanks to Rev. Daniel Kirbaraj, Chaplain, and friends who are responsible for the service arrangements. The theme for today's service is the goodness of creation. In contrast to the theme, our daily experiences hardly contain any goodness of creation. There is day by day increase of hardship, particularly in the times of pandemic. State protocol under the pandemic is about periodical washing of body parts, physical distance, and uh, wear face mask. We buy water for our daily consumption and needs. Increasing demand for water under the pandemic is expansion of water market. Therefore, washing body parts is an expensive practice, but it is very much required for a good and quality life. Addressing the water crisis in Asia Pacific region, Ban Ki moon, UN Secretary General, warned, I quote, our planet faces a growing water crisis. But the situation in the Asia Pacific region is especially troubling. High population growth, unsustainable consumption, pollution, and poor ma management all threaten the area's clean water source. Climate change is making a bad situation worse. Glaciers are receding, floods are getting worse, droughts are becoming longer and more severe. Unquote. A research work informs us that 60% global population lives in Asian con continent as of 2018 data. But the fast growing economies in Asia namely China, India and South Korea, are under severe water stress condition. The fresh water sources are drained unmindfully for water intensive industries, water intensive agriculture, water guzzling home appliances and lifestyle. Yet another emerging dimension of bad experience with creation is increase in conflicts and wars in control of water bodies globally. The background for six days war between Israel state and its neighboring countries has to do with Israel state national water carrier project, a major water transfer network. We infer that goodness of creation is turned into ugly with systematic destruction of good in creation. There are faith stories in the Bible that inform us about systematic destruction of goodness of creation and memories of such goodness. It further guides us way forward in addressing such crisis. Exodus 17 one to six verses presents a picture of destruction of memory of goodness of creation. Congregations of the Israelites are set to move out of slavery from the mighty hand of Pharaoh in Egypt towards promised land. 
they are on a long way through wilderness. They needed a break journey at different intervals. The first one is said to be a place called Refidim, which meaning rest. Usually, it is the memory of goodness in terms of availability of good water sources and safety stands as a primary factor in the decision to break a journey. Similarly, the liberated congregations of the Israelites might had halted their journey based on the stories of goodness of Rephidim. But they experienced aversion towards the decision to halt at Rephidim and subsequently on the project of liberation from the yoke of slavery, from the heavy hand of Pharaoh. They turned against Moses and they seems to stone him probably unto death. The reason is said as water-stressed condition of the place. It looks at the story, at the surface level, that the water stress is a natural phenomenon without any interference of humans, a phenomenon of geography. If it is so, why did the congregations of the Israelites blamed Moses, find fault with God's project of emancipation from slavery, disowned the memory of goodness of creation and goodness of creator? This question necessarily draws our attention to look beyond the geography and to link it with the geopolitical power structures and struggles of the region which turned the goodness of creation into bad and further ugly. From Moses' point of view, water stress crisis is only a test, massa. But the congregations of Israelites turned it into quarrel. Meriba. A test will serve as an opportunity to grow beyond the crisis creatively, whereas quarrel will suck into the crisis. A quarrel cause destruction of the memory of goodness, goodness of creation and goodness of the creator. Moses, who views the crisis as a test, on the way towards promised land, a wilderness experience to equip for a new life in a new land called upon the name of the Lord and submitted to the will of God. As a result of submission to the will of God and listening to the word of God, the congregations of Israelites could find fresh water out of stone a fossil reserve of water deposits. The goodness of creation and the Creator proved forever to be remembered, remembered at all times the saving power of God from physical as well as mental slavery. The Meribha experiences of aversion and quarrels is addressed by yet another story paving way for memory of goodness and memory of goodness of creation and the creator. It is from the book of Acts chapter 10 verses 9 to 16. This story is from a port to city called Joppa. We know port to cities are internationally connecting centers with cosmopolitan living environment. Peter lives in Joppa. 
in a vision he sees a large sheet carrying different animals reptiles and birds of different species and the sheet was lowered towards him he hears a voice instructing him to kill those birds and animals and eat the story tells that peter was hungry at the time and in hunger he went to sleep but peter's response is said to be based on his discernment to protect a food table from profane and unclean things the port city may offer all things to occupy the food table but it is only the discerning with appropriate political decision can safeguard the food table and water tables a memory of goodness of creation and the creator is guided by discerning and keeping away from the profane things the story of pandemic from wuhan in china is a story of mixing all sorts of animals and birds by the market forces for an international and a national market in wild life as a result the corona virus which is in the body of few mammals and birds had jumped into the body of humans and we humans cannot get rid of it a memory of goodness of creation and the creator jeopardize with the disowning paths of discernment and reasoning to protect food table and water table jesus further radicalizes memory of goodness of creation and the creator something vivid from the lord's prayer as it is recorded in st matthew's gospel chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 verse 13 reads as follow and do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one this verse is elaborated in some translation says for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever this part of lord's prayer seems to ascribe to the exodus tradition where god's kingdom god's power and god's glory is never keeping silence on enslaved community struggles for freedom and movement towards the promised land it is enabling presence of god almighty hand for the enslaved community to move out of pharaoh's mighty hand jesus strikes at the root of enslavement which is falling in debt and the path of freedom is said as forgiveness of debt a memory of goodness of the creation and the creator invites us to be a spiritually discerning which prompts political decisions to choose and sustain it in forgiving social relations a shared community ethos in summary we are encouraged to take all measures to nurture one another in the memory of goodness of creation and the creator and to stand united in our journey towards the promised land let our political decisions in choosing protect the food table and water table keep safe from profaning things and build a community ethos of forgiveness and healing may the good lord add blessings to the hearing of his word amen let us intercede lord our creator 
We pray for your guidance for us to be your faithful and theological stewards of earth care. Help us to keep and heal the creation. Teach us to right our religious wrongs and preserve the nature for the benefit of all people. Lord, our Redeemer, we pray that help us to redeem the suffering, the sick and the dying. May the socio-political, economic and cultural orders may bring healing upon the ungodly orders of life. Provide us the courage and strengthen our commitment to be in solidarity with the Dalits, Adivasis, tribals, women, children and farmers in preserving the nature. Lord, our comforter, revive our conscience to be aware of and act in urgency to protect the goodness of creation from within your graceful ways and means towards the fullness of life for all. Lord, we pray that we as a theological community will always maintain strong partnership with your whole creation and implement the theological culture everywhere and always. Lord, we pray for all those who are affected by the natural disasters and other unjust social orders. Protect everyone and all the living and non-living beings in the solidarity of your reign. Lord, we pray for all the students, staff and alumni of Gurukul. We remember those who served here over the past, our partners, friends from all over the world. We pray for the Gurukul Council members and all those who hold responsibilities of leadership. We pray for your blessings upon Miss Ramya on her birthday. We remember those who are sick and low in spirit for your gracious healing and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join in Lord's Prayer. Our God, Our God in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your reign come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil for yours is the rule, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you the, the Lord make God's face to shine upon you and, and be gracious to you. The, the Lord lift up God's countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.